favorite dealerships parts department to see if we can pick up one of the new rear seat delete kits for Project Go Man Go. They were originally only available in a Demon, but Dodge decided to go ahead and extend those out to the SRT line, and so they've got a new part number, which should make it easier to get. So we're gonna go over and either order one or maybe pick one up if they have it in stock. So we're headed that way now. And as I've mentioned before, Freeland Dodge and East Coast Mopars are the two places I get all my parts from. Both are really good folks. If you're local to Nashville, swing by and say hi to Jack at Freeland. Dig in that Ram 5500. That's a sharp looking truck. Nice. We got a Viper in the shop today. What's up, man? Can I film you for my YouTube channel? Film me? Yeah. Uh, you film <laughs> <else> <laughs> okay, so we got our part ordered. I'm gonna check with Jack tomorrow and uh, see when we'll get delivered. I guess it's made by their their truck accessory area or something like that. So. He told me just to uh, text him tomorrow and he would give me an ETA on when we think we might see delivery. So get that, hopefully it'll be here soon. Okay, so we are back to pick up our rear seat delete. Today we're gonna come in the back of the parts department. There's Nelson, usual suspect. I think our rear seat deletes here. We can go talk to Jerry up here. And now, <laughs> Jerry hard at work. Just bought him a Challenger. He's gotta make the payments on his Challenger now. But he don't work hard. He just does that. He's hardly working. <laughs> there it is. So we say 50 pounds. We're back at the shop. We got the rear seat delete ready to go. I'm gonna start by getting the back seats out of Go Man Go here. You've seen me do that before, so I'm not gonna film it again. I'm just gonna link in a card up top so you can go check that out and see how it's done, and we'll be right back. Seats are now out. It literally took me about two, maybe two and a half minutes to do that, including time to organize them so they actually look good on film. If you want to see exactly how to do that, go back and follow that card that I linked to the top of the video earlier. And uh, I've done this before, super quick and easy. Go follow that. Now it gets a little bit more complicated because we have to actually remove some panels to get the uh, rear panel off of the back by the back glass, as well as the seat belts out. You're going to need some special tools for that. I'm going to show you what those are. It's a nasty, soggy, rainy day at Speedy's Garage today, so a perfect day to be in the shop working on Go Mango. And here's what the back of the car looks like with the seats removed. Now we're gonna start going after some of the side panels so we can get after those seat belt bolts. And I've seen several people um, either order their car with the rear seat delete, have the dealer put the rear seat delete in, or put it in themselves, but I've never seen anybody actually take a weight measurement to see how much weight we're actually saving. So we're gonna do that today and answer that question once and for all as well. And here's a couple of those special tools I mentioned. One of them is gonna be a T50. I call it a star bit. That's gonna be for the seat belts. Anytime you have a safety item in a car, they're usually gonna have some kind of special fastener and they're likely also Loctited. So I'm also gonna be using my um, 3 8 impact on that. And then I picked up a set of these. Anytime I do a project myself, I take the money that I save and use it to buy tools, which is always a good thing. And particularly these long ones, I think there's gonna be some of these plastic tabs that hold some of the panels in place that I need to get to. And I'm gonna be able to reach back in there with one of these to make those um, tabs pop loose. Anytime you're working with plastic panels, it's always best to try to get behind them and pop them loose than it is to try to pull it because you run uh, less of a chance of breaking anything. And obviously that's our number one goal today, don't break anything. And I got these 
It's a panel trim removal set, it's what they call it, from Harbor Freight. They were on sale for like 20 bucks. And a set of these star bits, I think are $25 maybe. They come in a set of six, I believe. Let's see. Here they are right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have to get nine of them, all the way up to a T60. This must be a T55, yep. And then a T50, obviously. They didn't come in this magnetic case. I bought that separate. But anyway, you can get a set of those at Harbor Freight as well. Some of their tools are crap. Some of them are actually pretty good. But the price is always right. And I'm getting into a little bit of uncharted territory since I haven't removed the rear panels in one of these. So I'm going to take a look at the paperwork. And wow, it's right there on top. Imagine that as soon as we open the box. I'm going to take a look at the paperwork to see what kind of tips and tricks it might give us that we need to know to remove those rear panels. Okay, so these are instructions, they're color, they're very inclusive, they give you diagrams, which thank goodness, because I hate reading instructions, I just like to look at the pictures, gives me an idea. They do actually call out exactly what tools you're gonna need, which is nice. It says we're gonna need a 10 millimeter, a couple of places, a couple of uh, Phillips head screws, I think. So we're just gonna get to it, start taking some of these panels off, and get this thing installed. Okay, so obviously I'm folded up like a sardine in the back seat here. I'm going to start by removing these two push pins. I've already loosened the passenger side, um, but I wanted to show you guys the driver's side. So, using the panel tool, and you just kind of wiggle it behind the fastener, and they'll pop out. This is the part you want to be careful with, obviously. I'm using plastic panel tools there. There's an SRS cutout on the upper quarter panel. You want to pop that out. There's what it looks like. And there's a seven millimeter uh, screw behind it. I recommend you use, had it somewhere, a magnetic screwdriver. So I've got a magnetic bit in that. That way I don't drop it. Obviously have a little tray or something or a place to keep all your fasteners. Okay, now we're going to pop off this little cover by the seat belt. And now we're going to have to pop this quarter panel, not completely off, but you're going to have to back it out some so that you can get to um, this upper trim panel here, this upper quarter panel. There's a seven millimeter, I'm sorry, a Phillips head screw right, right behind where we need to get here. And to do that, we're also going to have to pop the um, trim off the door. And it's just plastic tabs. You can just pop that up and get that loosened. And then there will also be a Phillips head screw on the edge of this quarter panel where it connects to the bottom of the door frame. So we're going to go do that now. And then we're going to come back and very carefully pop these two panels off the car. the lower loose. Now we're going after the Phillips head screw. You probably can't see it from over there, but it's at the very bottom of the upper quarter panel. Once you have that screw out, you'll see some kind of electrical connector connecting up right underneath uh, about the middle of the window. You need a small flat screwdriver and you just push from the back to the front and it'll push a little purple tab and then you can squeeze it and unplug it. Hopefully you can see it, but I doubt it. Next, you're just gonna pop this loose from the car. Oh, almost forgot. Up here at the top, there's one more little square. You're gonna use your plastic pry tool. Remove that, there's one more um, seven millimeter bolt holding it. Okay, now we can pop it loose. It comes out pretty easy. At least the other side did. What 
I do is I kind of reach in there with my fingers and try to find the clips and I put my fingers around them like a fork. Remember I told you to push from behind and I just push till they pop loose. And when you get all this pretty well ready to go, come in here and remove your T50 Torx bit for your seat belt. There's a little trim piece back here in the back on the pillar. That will pop loose. Just do little tabs on that. Then just feed the seat belt through this upper trim panel. We'll put it in the trunk for now. We got another T50 up here for the seat belt. I'll go ahead and grab that. Try to get this where you can see it, but there's not a whole lot of room. The actual seat belt reel, there's one more T50 underneath it. You back that out, and then it just unhooks from the body of the car. Now you see why you want to use an impact on those. They're in there pretty tight. There's our seat belt. We still got one more seat belt reel back here we have to take this package tray out to get to it so we pop the two pins Let's see if we got room to maneuver it out we have to pop these down loosen them same as before just reach back to you find the tab pop it there's two Okay, now we're gonna make some room to get this out of here. Okay, to give room for that package tray to come out, I had to disconnect, hope you can see that, little speaker wire on each side. It's a, I think it's a little tweeter that's up in the top of the panel. There's a little plastic clip. It's down on the black part, so don't get confused. Look down farther than where you would expect it to be, and you just push down on that, and it'll pop right out. Next, I'm gonna take this plastic piece off the seat belt harness, or webbing as they like to call it. Slide that off. I'm going to feed the seat belt through the hole so it's out of my way. Now it should be able to just slide this right here out. There we go. Beer assistant. AKA Miss Speedy. Beer assistant. Beer assistant. Can you come grab this, please? Just set it down. Thank you. Might need a helper. So now we got that out of the way, we can get the two latches. They're held on with 10 millimeter bolts, and then we can go after this uh, seat belt clamp up here, or seat belt reel, I should say. Okay, next I'm gonna remove the locks for the seats, the latches, and it's a 10 millimeter. I'm using a wobbly on an extension to make it easier. And finally, there's an 18 millimeter bolt behind the seat belt reel. Be very careful, you can crack your back glass if you bang it. So we're gonna go nice and slow. There we go, last seat belt is removed. And I'm gonna go ahead and take these um, clips out. I just have visions of these things rattling down the road. And I can't stand something to be rattling in my car. And all I did was use a small hook. To get it out. And then I'm going to mount them up. To the brackets. So that I don't ever lose the bolts. Just like that. I got both of them. That way I can box them up. If we want to put the seat back in we'll be able to. Here's all the stuff that comes out. It's part of the rear seat delete. Seats, seat belts, brackets, strikers, and the package tray. So now let's find out how much it all weighs. 
So I weighed the seat belts and they weighed, these two with the extra bolts weighed 1.94 pounds each, almost two pounds. This one, because it has a nut instead of a bolt for one of the connectors or fasteners, it was 1.92. The two seat belts, or the two little, um, I guess, seat belt clips, the, all the fasteners for the seats and the seat belts and the two strikers for the rear seat backs are 1.623 pounds. So when we add all of that up, just the seat belts alone are seven pounds, seven ounces. And the stock package tray is 2.00 pounds. And yes, I do realize we'll be replacing this with the rear seat delete version, so we're gonna weigh it as well. Okay, I weighed the uh, seats. The seat backs are actually 35 pounds, eight ounces, which is quite a lot. And the bottom is 13 pounds, eight ounces. So combined, it's 49 pounds. So here's what you get with the rear seat delete. There's the bottom, the back, the mounting bracket, and the package tray. And you also get these two trim pieces and a couple of bolts and some of those push pins. Package tray is a little bit different. It includes a weather seal where it meets the uh, back glass. And hopefully you can see this. The Dodge hash symbol is stamped into the middle of the panel. The bottom has a net to hold some things and you get a warning that says uh, do not sit back here. If you do and something happens to you, Dodge doesn't have anything for you because they put a sticker on there that said don't. And looks like you can disconnect the net to put things underneath it if you'd like. Underneath, that's what it looks like. It's got some standoffs to make it secure. You can take the net off if you want to, but it wouldn't be easy. You'd probably have to enlarge those holes. I'm gonna leave it because it came on there. Might hold my helmet or something like that. And look at how they did the brackets. Heavy duty glue just oozes through the perforation there, holds it in place. So hopefully that holds up over time. Super lightweight. We're gonna weigh it now. See how much all this weighs and how much weight savings we're gonna realize. There's what the back of the middle panel looks like. Just snaps in place. It's kind of a heavy duty cardboard kind of material. Kind of like what the headliner's made out of or um, that panel that's in the trunk. Kind of similar to that, but super lightweight. Okay, the rear seat delete bottom is about 3.76 pounds and the back weighs right at 4.1 pounds. These are a little difficult to weigh because of their size and shape, so I figure if we get within a tenth of a pound, we're doing okay. Okay, the rear trim pieces, the bolts, the push pins, and the bracket are 0.62 of a pound. And finally, the rear seat delete package tray weighs two pounds. And if you're curious, there's the part number I ordered. However, I noticed on the packing slip it said close out, so I'm not sure if they're changing part numbers or going to something different. But on the uh, paperwork, everything is a separate part number. So there's that too, just in case you need it. All right, we got the weight totaled up. I converted anything that was a decimal over to ounces. I uh, used a Google calculator to do that. And what it comes out to is exactly 10 pounds, 10 ounces. Total weight for the rear seat delete. So with all that hard math out of the way, let's get it in the car. Okay, we're back in the car with the rear seat delete package tray. I'm gonna try to fit this in. A little bit tricky we got so much stuff going on here i'm gonna lay these quarter panels down so that i can get this in straight and there's metal locks underneath it you want to make sure they engage they're like clips i believe we got it once you're pretty happy with how it's setting Go ahead and install your push pins to hold it in place. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I found a mistake in their instructions. I don't know if it's just because this is a Hellcat and maybe this um, rear seat delete was designed to go in a Demon and that's what they wrote the instructions for. But these little U-clips, 
that we took out earlier from the uh, strikers for the rear seat backs, you actually need two of these, one on each side for the bracket that holds the middle seat back. So I went and got two of those and we're going to put these back in. And now we can install our bracket. And it has a slotted end and a round end for the bolt. Round end goes on the passenger side. And there's a little hook that'll also go in the other hole where the striker was to hold it in place. And it's a 10 millimeter bolt, and this is hardware that was included with the rear seat delete. Okay, now we're ready to get the panels back in place. I'm gonna start with these side ones. Actually, take that back. I'm gonna start with the uppers. Don't forget about the little electrical plug. You need to plug that in. Let's see, it goes this way. That's the first thing I'm gonna do so I don't forget. I gotta be a bit of a contortionist to do this job. Don't forget, after you plug it in, you have to push the purple plunger down so that it locks. Make sure it goes behind the rubber seal by the driver door. Once we got that done, we're gonna reinstall the screw that goes in the bottom. And next, the two seven millimeter bolts or screws. And it's plastic, so don't over tighten it. And now, I'm gonna get this panel back in. It's just a matter of lining up the push pins and using some hand pressure. Don't forget to plug your speaker back in. And we've got one Phillips head screw that'll go back on the outside. I'm gonna do that when I finish. And we got a push pin we're gonna put in make sure we got them all. We're going to install our plastic covers. And this is where you're going to use one of the included ones with the rear seat delete. It's to cover up your seat belt hole. There we go. Okay, now we just have to do the same thing on the other side that you can't see. Then we're going to be ready to put the seat back on. Now we can install the rear seat delete back. And what you do is you line it up on the original seat brackets that were at the bottom there. When you have it set like you like it, then you just line up the holes with the pins and the bracket, which should be pretty straightforward. And then just use hand pressure. Start pressing it in place. And that's it. Now ready for the seat bottom. We're on the home stretch. So you want to set the rear seat delete bottom in and make sure it's flush with the back. And then you just have to line up the feet and they will snap in to those factory rubber grommets that the seat did. There you are. There we go. Rear seat delete installed. And if you're curious what it looks like from the trunk, there you go. It blends right in, the colors match, just like you would expect it to with a factory part. Looks great. So now we're just doing a little bit of cleanup. You saw what it took to install the rear seat to lead in the Hellcat, Go Man Go. Pretty easy. It's uh, a bit tedious, just with all the, get to kind of be a contortionist and kind of fit yourself around inside the car a little bit. And I actually got a pretty good workout, believe it or not, doing that. The finish and the fit is very, very nice, way better than I expected. Um, I know what you're waiting for. You're wondering how much weight we saved and I added everything up. We took 59 pounds out of the car. I know that sounds like a lot, but I promise you I weighed all the parts individually. 59 pounds is what they weighed. 
we put 11 pounds back in the car. So we saved 48 pounds of weight by going to that rear seat delete. And what's really interesting is back when I had Orange Crush, I was actually developing and building my own rear seat delete. I was um, actually in the process of working on a cardboard template to figure out how to make one. I was gonna use a little uh, quarter inch or 3 16 inch uh, balsa wood from the local hardware store. I was already trying to locate carpeting that would match the uh, factory carpeting. And then of course we, we ended up selling uh, Orange Crush and we ended up with Go Man Go. And, and I was kind of glad when I heard that the Demon was going to be released with a rear seat delete option. I knew they would finish the, the panels off in the back and make it look nice. So I got excited about that. And then, but I was a little bit worried it would be, it'd be difficult to get. It would be a Demon only, you have to show a VIN number and I'd have to pull a bunch of strings to try to get one. And then we heard about the Hellcat being able to be ordered as a rear seat delete car. And when I heard that, I thought, yep, now you're going to be able to get them pretty easy. And sure enough, I just looked up the part number online, called my favorite parts store, and ordered it. They had it in three or four days, and I went down and picked it up. If you're wondering what they cost, at the time I ordered mine, it was a little bit under $400. Now, that could change depending on what they ended up, what they end up doing with the part numbers long term, but a little bit under $400 bucks is what I paid. If I were ordering a car today, I would go ahead and get the rear seats and then I would just go to the parts department and order the rear seat delete kit. The leather seats in my car, I can assure you, cost a whole lot more than 400 bucks. Um, the leather's really nice, and I'm sure you're wondering, like, what's, what speed are you gonna do with his rear seats now? Well, I'm not gonna sell them, I'm not gonna do anything weird like that. I'm gonna bag and tag and box all the seat belt bolts, the seat belts, everything. The, the strikers for the rear seats, everything will get boxed up and labeled. The rear seats will get a coating of leather protectant applied to them and I will wrap them in uh, cotton sheets or something like that and I'll store them in the house somewhere. I'm not going to put them in the, the attic or where I would normally put spare parts for the car. Um, they're going to have to go somewhere where the temperature is controlled to protect the leather and keep them nice. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to store them and put them up. I've already uh, got the package tray, the stock package tray wrapped up over here ready to go into storage. And so that's what I'm going to do there. And some people may ask, well what about people riding in the back? Well I don't know about you, but in my Hellcat and even in Orange Crush, the previous Challenger that I had, I think I had people ride in the back of Orange Crush in the nine years I owned it, twice maybe, and in the two years I've owned Go Man Go, I've had people ride in the back one time. So for me, it's more of a performance car, I don't need back seats in it, I'm glad there's a finishing panel to make it look factory, I always like that, and so the rear seat delete gets a thumbs up, and that's the way I'm going. If I ever change my mind and want to switch back, I'll have everything, I can just put it back together at that time when maybe I'm not drag racing anymore or things like that. But for now, I want the car as light as I can make it so it can go fast. Hope you liked the video. Hope it was informational. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit the bell so you get notified of new content as we release it. Check us out on Instagram at speedies underscore garage as well as uh, website www.speediesgarage.net and I will see you out there.